Hi, today uh, we're going to discuss connecting a CMMP AS M3 controller uh, by Ethernet IP to a Control Logics PLC. And the trick on this application guide is the fact that this um, the firmware in the Control Logics PLC is really old, like 10 plus years old. Um, we're going. So I downloaded, I have a uh, L61 uh, B series and it's version 13044. And if I continue to look through the things here, so this is the one I downloaded right here. That's what I updated to. I've got, and that one there, that one there, and finished. So 13.44.1 is the rev number that we're using. Okay, so that's the trick on this one. And if you know much about Rockwell, um, AOIs or add-on instructions were not um, invented until, I think it's version 16. Yeah, I'm pretty certain it's version 16. There's a tech note um, for that. Anyway, so, you know, the Festo does offer AOIs for the CMMP AS M3 but we can't use it so uh, on this old plc so this is a, a common question uh, for a lot of uh, programmers so what i've done here is i've created some code that uh, basically just acts on the data table io so let's talk about the fct the festa configuration tool software for a sec so I just have a setup like this. Um, this will be included in the project at some point. The uh, the important thing here is the um, the Ethernet IP CAMC FEP card is a Rev3. Um, that changes a couple of things as far as the layout of data mapping. The other um, important factor is, of course, the firmware version in the controller. So that says Rev2, but it's actually a Rev3. Um, it's not always reporting right here properly. Um, there's some hidden commands you can do but uh, to find out the real version, but uh, that's not the topic here. So this is important. Version 2.3 is what this is covering here. And when you have that and you have this uh, factor group configured here and FHPP, uh, you've got 16 bytes in and out. And um, when you're on version 2.3 and you're using a generic module in the Rockwell environment, you, I'm just gonna open this up here. Your uh, I/O size is going to be uh, an extra four bytes or an extra double integer for inputs, and then the data. So, and that's because there's a header information built in when you're using a generic module. I have not tested EDS file. I'm assuming it doesn't work because it's really, really old, and anything I could find on the Festa website was uh, relatively new. I'm not going to bother trying anything further. So I'm just doing the generic module. It's really sim simple. Set up the IO size and away you go. Um, so what I've done here is um, there's a data map. Okay. And I'm going to go online. I'm going to download. Okay. Yes. Uh, we're online. So right off the bat, you'll see that we've got an Ethernet connection. This is the only real big problem that I have found. Um, other than the fact that, you know, the the, uh, the card, the module itself needs to be 4.8. I have not tested anything else newer, but I know some older things don't work. Uh, cause the uh, Ethernet IP to continuously drop out right here and get faults. Um, the 
project itself is nothing nothing straightforward other than the fact that there's my code has six record mode moves. So this is the record table where you set up some moves and then you call the record number, tell it to go get a finished bit, that kind of thing. And then then there's direct mode, which is where you specify a, an actual target position from the PLC and a velocity, which is uh, the velocity is based upon this base velocity. So you specify a zero to 100%. I'll show you that in a minute. Um, sorry for being kind of all over the place here. I'm kind of in a rush. Basically, we got online. Okay, so this code is for debugging purposes. You guys, it's a sample code. So the word sample, I hope under understanding why is everyone gets that. It's a sample. It's not meant to be used as a finished complete product. You have to manipulate it to do something on your application. So. I'm using bits that I toggle, so control T, you know, toggle bit. So I have two distinct modes of operation here. I've got homing mode. Um, homing, I've got it set up here so that when we start up first scan, I look at it. Hey, are we, uh, are we homed or not? And uh, I can also rehome it anytime I want. The position is coming through right here which I didn't even know I had working. Uh, talk about lucky. So 149 is actual position. And where did I do that? Uh, a bit field distribute or something. Yeah, okay, so it's coming through the data. It's a double integer coming through. I multiply it by 1,000 because of the scaling factor. Um, factor group here is to the minus three, so. Hopefully you understand that. So basically, come through here. I've got a timer, so if I ever want to rehome it, so turn the bit on by toggling it, and, and nothing happens because we're not enabled yet. That's because we have a fault, see? So um, uh, as we show here, we have a fault, so it's not ready to be enabled yet. So this, this ready for enable is not on yet because we have the fault. So over here, I'm going to toggle this, you know, control T, toggle it, and it doesn't reset. Why doesn't it reset? Well, nobody's perfect. Okay, well, right now I can't reset the controller, so I'm going to do a restart on it. Okay, a restart did the trick. Um, so I guess downloading the PLC program, you basically have to restart the controller and that's what you're gonna have to deal with due to the fact that you're using ancient Rockwell software. Um, maybe if you uh, were to update your Ethernet IP firmware on your card, your, your control flash, maybe it'll act a little bit differently, I don't know. So that's up to you. But uh, pressing on, moving forward, I have got homing so i've already homed it it homed automatically because you know it was not referenced it's not faulted it unlatched this bit and away you went if you want to re-execute the home um press this bit here and it'll re-execute the home and you'll see the move of the axis the uh so you've homed the axis now it's ready to rock and roll you can uh, physically go and do something. Um, of course, there's other features that I've not built in. Um, basically, what I did here was, you know, the this is a the access controller. This is the data. What I did here was I went in and I labeled or I added descriptions for all the I/O. Okay, so some of these bits and bytes I'm using in the code. Some of them I'm not. For example, the jog. I don't have any code for that. But if you come into here right now and you put on a jog positive and turn this bit on, turn it back off, and you'll see that it moved. So let's see if I can show you that kind of real time. Both things here open. Uh, 
Uh, the screen size is not the biggest. Now the jog plus. And you see it changing there. And I stop it and you go jog minus. Stop it. So there is some other code you can do, obviously. Uh, you can simply look at the data map here and the description should make you or give you an understanding of what you're doing, what you're not doing, things like that. Um, what I have done here, um, there is a way to read parameters. I have not tested this yet, but right now I'm just getting the axis up and going. This is this is theoretical code in, in this right here. Hopefully I have some time to test this later. Um, but basically what I have working right now are the moves. So in my move data, I have some common moves because I understand how the what the bits and bytes are expected here. So the idea here is that I, I shove a percentage in to uh, the velocity, and that velocity percentage is based upon 1,000. So if I put in a 10%, 10% of 1,000 is 100. So, um, and then the target value 10, that gets scaled and shoved out the door later into a whole number, or it's whole integer, or double, double integer, sorry. And uh, basically the way the whole move works is that you start the move by um, turning on the start bit, you wait for an acknowledge bit, you turn off the start bit, then you wait for the motion complete, the move's finished. So in a nutshell, this is how the code works. So precondition, I'm just using a little stepper in the, on another rung here. I look at some safeties, there's always some things that are required before moving, otherwise uh, you don't always get the movement to happen. So I've got the safety rung here, there's all these little bits right here that uh, need to be applicable or on or off before starting any one move. And uh, I've got the sequencer happening here, and I've got this common control. So basically, uh, I'm in direct mode. If I have a command and I'm not active, I turn the start on. And I interact with each step as I go through here. I get the start acknowledge, I turn on the active, so that cancels the command. Then the command, the start acknowledge goes off, and now I'm looking for the motion complete. When that's finished, I get the motion complete in my internal bit, I latch it in. This rung here I've added to tell you that, you know, it's at position. It's not needed, you can manipulate this code you want. You know, typically in any server motion controller, a motion complete bit is actually theoretical. Um, so if you want to kind of close your own window around something, make sure, hey, I'm physically at that target for sure, 100%. You could use something like this code-wise. It's just, you know, giving it a limit test and so on and so forth. So that's how direct mode works. So if I come into here, turn this auto mode bit on, this is a toggle right here. And as well in the code, I have this bit here and auto bit too. These are just toggle bits. So you know, typically there's an auto mode on the machine and then there's a push button to say, okay, cycle start everything. So that's auto mode, turn the auto on. I've hit the cycle start button and now I go into the steps here and I turn this bit on and it starts running through sequences. Um, not brain science. The, uh, let's just go see if I can look at some targets. Uh, where did I put the, so the common control, there it is. So you see here that the position, the actual position is actually changing. I'm basically going 10 millimeter moves, all absolute. If you look at this right here, you know, 10, 10, I'm going to a target 20 next, target 30. Um, if I slow these down, let's, let's go 5%, 5%, 5%, 5%, 5%, 5%, 5%, 5%. Okay, so we're doing 5% right now. So you hear 20, 30, 40, it's still pretty quick. 
You have to do you have to do some really slow moves. But anyway, it works fine. This is this is good structure for code. It's pretty solid. And uh I think I've even got some secret recovery in here. Uh, let's say I I open the gate. So I open the gate. I was just in the middle of doing a move. If I was to follow my code, let's see where I am. Code, code, code. I am doing that step there, step six, so we go to the very end. So I had the precondition, I had started, and basically I was stopped. So the target, the target was 60, I'm actually at 54. And when I come through and I reset the gate, it immediately takes up and keeps going. I mean, you can add some more code to it, but it's basically up and running again. So I'm just gonna turn off the sequencer here. So I'm gonna turn this bit off, okay? It'll finish its sequence of the six moves and then reset itself. So the sequence has been reset here. I'm gonna go change the mode. I'm going to toggle this. It'll turn off direct mode. And now record sequence is active, which is this bit right here. It gives you status. And same concept for a movement here is you set a record number. You turn on the start bit, which is right here. Start bit. Um, and wait for the acknowledge. That turns on the active, which turns off the start bit. The acknowledge should turn off at that point, then you get the motion complete, say you're finished. So I'm just gonna turn this bit on here and away we go off and running. It's gonna continuously cycle through here and so on and so forth. So that works too. And I'm out of time. So hopefully this helps you in your pursuance to using really old Firmware on a control logics processor. I guess the last thing I could do is not that, is this right here. So, properties, where are you? Domains properties. So, again, there's the revision number of that. And <clears throat> there's the revision of that. There's the revision of that. And like I said before, this particular module or card is a Rev3 module. And that is the video for today using basic simple code. And as I said before, I don't, I don't know if this is working right here or not. This is hardware version. Um, I could I could try it. Yeah. Anyway, the parameters don't work right now. I, I don't I don't know if they work or not. I'm not going to test that right now. I just don't have time. Uh, I hope this video helps you. Thanks.